Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to explore some short-form literature, uh, some sh um, short stories that I th think are particularly interesting. Actually, just one short story. And so today I wanted to focus on one that is a Western and a tale of revenge. I am referring to Charlie Martz by Elmore Leonard from his collection, Charlie Martz and Other, sh uh, other Stories, um, the unpublished stories um, that were published after his death in 2013. So published around 2014. Um, and I, while I have problems uh, with um, publishing authors' work after their death, I I do think this is uh, this is pretty good. And I'll talk about it uh, talk about that a little bit later. But I got this from my local library. Don't forget to patronize your local library. For those who don't know, Elmore Leonard was a screenwriter as well as an author, known for writing westerns as well as tales of suspense. When I went to check out this uh, from my local library. Um, I actually saw that there was a they had a huge collection of his work and uh, two things that he wrote were be cool and get shorty which I recognized as movie titles and what I found out was that he actually wrote these books that were later turned into movies a fair amount of his work was turned into movies as well as 310 to Yuma which I've heard about before too none of, none of which I've actually seen I should probably read the books and then watch the movies um, just to you know get up there with, with culture and whatnot in his time Elmore Leonard was compared favorably to Ernest Hemingway um, which is something that Elmore Leonard welcomed um, and, and I can see in his work there's a lot of a lot of writing that wouldn't feel out of place in a Hemingway novel um, although he uh, he also criticized Hemingway because he, he felt uh, Hemingway was humorless and took himself too seriously at times. So uh, fair fair amount of criticism, which which I agree with. Um, yeah. So without further ado, let's talk about Charlie Martz um, by Elmore Leonard. I'll do a little summary, a little analysis, and we will move on from there. Charlie Martz uh, focuses on the town of Mesilla, uh, specifically a mysterious writer who arrives in the town of Mesilla. Nobody seems to know who this person is, and he's met by Martin Huber and Adolf Schmidt. Uh, Martin Huber is the bartender in town, and Adolf Schmidt is uh, just some some town town. Towns, townsperson. Uh, they both view this mysterious writer with suspicion, note that he has a gun on him, and they don't quite know his purpose in this town. And the writer notes that if, if he were, were a gunny, um, a, a gunner, gun, um, an outlaw of sorts, uh, he would he would have already killed them for asking too many questions. He's just simply passing through um, uh, on his journey to a mysterious destination. The bartender and Adolf Schmidt begin to talk about the sheriff in town, uh, Charlie Martz. And the writer reveals that he actually knows Charlie Martz and he talks about how his name is Billy Bushway uh, and he's been looking for Charlie Martz because they go back a ways and he wants to catch up with him and, uh, and get reacquainted with him. Uh, Adolf Schmidt says that he has a gun waiting for Charlie Martz uh, that he's been smithing for him, and so he'll be, uh, they can he can follow him and they can meet up again, which uh, sounds pretty good. But unfortunately, uh, Adolf Schmidt discovers along the way that Billy Bushlaw has a vengeance, a a, a desire for revenge against Charlie Martz, because uh, uh, Martz uh, put. Billy away in jail 20 years ago and took 10 years off of his life and he's been seeking revenge ever since because you know uh, Billy was an outlaw of some sort and now he's uh, looking to kill um, Charlie Martz. When they get back to Schmidt's house uh, Billy asked uh, Adolf to give him the the gun that he was going to give Charlie uh, and then he waits for Charlie, Charlie to show up. When he does uh, he announces himself and Charlie um, expresses that he, he could tell who Billy was by his voice and how he deserved to be in jail all those years ago because he was doing crimes and whatnot. At this point Billy challenges Charlie to a confrontation and brags that he's going to 
kill Charlie with his own gun. The duel commences, and then uh, rather uh, rather um, pointedly, Charlie shoots Billy, and and Billy dies, and Charlie goes about his business, and that's where the story ends. On a very blunt note, there. In terms of analysis, I I really love this story. Uh, one thing that I particularly love about it is the fantastic atmosphere and the writing that uh, that uh, Elmore Leonard does to set up everything. Uh, he he does it especially in the very beginning of the story where he he lays out uh, what this what uh, what what Missilla looks like. And this this Western atmosphere, you, you you get the vibe right away that they're that they're in the old West and everything is kind of dirty and everything's hot and people are dehydrated. Uh, let me let me read a passage to you there. In Missilla, it was the hour of the siesta. The small square that marked the center of the adobe settlement was void of any sign of life. Only the glare of the bleaching southwestern sun danced about the dry fountain in the middle of the square and against the crumbly baked sand walls of the adobe buildings fronting the square. The tall sandstone mission bordering the eastern end stood desolate and alone. Occasionally could be heard a faint, hollow clang as a hot wind swept through the arch of the mission belfry to nudge the massive bell. The bark of a stray dog, the slam of a screen door, only these sounds broke the bright glare stillness. Across the square, directly opposite the mission, stood the Exquisita, Missilla's only saloon. Its adobe surface was the exact same bleak structure as the other buildings in the solitary row, except above the wide doorway and the width of the building, a supported tin roof structure extended awkwardly eight or ten feet, providing the only shade on that side of the square. Uh, so you, you really get the vibe that this is a is a hot place. It's a very small town um, because it, again it's an it's an old west old west settlement. Uh, everyone's hot. Uh, there's not a lot going on. Uh, and in comes this mysterious rider. What is his purpose? We don't tr- we don't truly know at the beginning. Um, and so that's another aspect of the story that I, I really like. I really like how Elmore Elmore Leonard slowly reveals Billy's purpose in a in a very kind of insidious way. Um, it's starts out that um, Billy's riding into town as a mysterious as a mysterious person and Adolf Schmidt and um, Martin Huber don't initially trust him because he has a gun and what what could he possibly need the gun for maybe it's for the um, the, the indigenous um, groups who were marauding around the area killing anyone they could find at the time um, at least in this story um, perhaps it was that but in re- uh, in reality they think he's probably an outlaw and he he notes like if I were an outlaw, um, I would have killed you by now. And then he goes on to say, "Oh, I know uh, Charlie Martz. Um, he, we, we go back." And so Martin and Adolf are like, "Oh, he can't be that bad." And then when Ad- Adolf takes him back to his house, um, Billy slowly reveals more about himself, and Adolf immediately understands that. Uh, Billy aims to kill the sheriff and possibly also Adolf and his wife because, um, you know, getting rid of any any witnesses. And so it's you get you get this deeply unsettling feeling that um, things are about to go very sour, very fast um, throughout this story. And that's just one aspect that I really love about it. I also love how Elmore Leonard describes Billy and Charlie as very different. I'll read you both of their descriptions. The Germans studied him eagerly as he approached the bar. He saw a sun-scarred, dust-streaked face beneath the dirty, narrow-brimmed white sombrero. The face was young, but at the same time old, maybe just past 30, but more likely closer to 40. A sandy-colored mustache drooped around the corners of his mouth. The middle part was stained slightly from tobacco juice. His arms hung limply, his left hand almost touching a holster revolver that hung low on his left hip. As the rider came up to him, the German saw part of the butt of another revolver protruding from his open buckskin jacket. The second gun was under his right arm. Approaching the bar, his strides were long, slow, but noticeably stiff. He'd been riding for a good many hours. And so right there, you, you get um, a good understanding of who this guy is. He's been riding for many hours, as, as, as was noted. Uh, so he's clearly 
out to find something, which we later find out is Charlie. He's looking for revenge, and he's very dedicated to, to getting it. Um, but he's also he also has sun-stained skin. He's been out for a while. He looks older than he actually is. Um, I think that could be attributed to his time in prison. Um, uh, some people who, who go through extreme stressful events like prison come out um, older than they even may actually be. They look vastly older. Um, so uh, he, he looks exactly like like um, a, an ex-con would look and someone who is, is clearly dead set on revenge, spending most of his time outdoors. Um, Charlie's description is, is, is different. The lawman's eyes smiled beneath the stiff brim of a sweat-stained sombrero. A full drooping mustache, the fashion of the day, similar to the gunman's, graced his upper lip. But Charlie's was pure white and well-trimmed. He stood before Bushway, tall, very thin, and just a little tired looking. His pistol was on the left hip, but but well toward the the front with the butt facing forward. So you get a very different description uh, of Charlie than from Billy. Uh, Charlie looks noticeably older than Billy, um, and he he's he's kind of more relaxed. He has a well trimmed mustache. He grooms himself, unlike Billy. Billy's perhaps thinking of other things other than grooming himself. Uh, so he's he, um, uh, Charlie's very relaxed. And what's more is um, it's described in the story that he's the sheriff of the of this town of this area. But he uh, the people of the area are looking to get rid of him because he actually he hasn't actually looked for any lawbreakers. He's not really doing his job very well um, so uh, very relaxed and possibly not looking looking to actually get involved in anything um, nearing retirement and so you get these very different uh, feels um, but don't let that uh, don't let that um, uh, get, get Charlie wrong Charlie's very capable at his job he's just very relaxed and Billy finds this out the hard way and so the last aspect of this story that I want to talk about is revenge. The big theme of the story is revenge. Billy was arrested 20 years ago, and he spent 10 years um, in prison, and then another 10 years looking for uh, Charlie Martz in order to um, shoot him, uh, in order to get his revenge for being put away in jail, even though he deserved to go to jail. Uh, perhaps Billy does not see it that way. Um, and wh what's more is he wants to, to get a little personal with his revenge. He wants Wants to shoot Charlie with his own gun, the gun that Schmidt made um, for him. So that would, uh, you know, that put a little more sting on him. The gun that he was going to have, this new thing, is being is the one being made to kill him. So um, a little, um, a little poetic on uh, on Elmore Leonard's part. Uh, but you know, Billy's too cocky in the story. He believes that. Um, that because Charlie wasn't expecting him, and because he's um, he's a, a bit more relaxed, he's an easy target. That he's easy to kill. But that that's quickly um, you know uh, dashed. His hopes are dashed because as soon as the duel starts, Charlie takes out his gun very quickly and shoots uh, Billy and kills him. Two shots to the chest, dead. Um, and it, he does it very matter-of-factly. Another quote I would like to read to you. He's dead as a stone, Charlie. You got him clean through the chest twice. Charlie Martz had only then relaxed his position. He holstered the pistol and made his way around the table. Just matter-of-factly right there. Uh, it's clear that, you know, Charlie considers this just business as usual. Kill this outlaw who wants him dead and then go about your business. No time really thinking about um, the, uh, the, the dead man before him or the fact that he's spent so long plotting his revenge. This is just, you know, a normal facet of, of, of his life, I guess. And it's interesting because I read uh, a story a few weeks ago, The Scapegoat by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, which also had revenge as a theme. And for the, the, the main character in that story, revenge was justified and, uh, and pretty sweet on his part. Nothing really went wrong for him. But in Charlie Martz, uh, Billy uh, isn't able to get his revenge, and it turns out that focusing all of your attention on killing someone for 10 years of your life is toxic, and uh, it's going to make you miss important signs that this person is more competent than you. So, um, uh, very different ways of expressing revenge, which which I thought was uh, pretty, pretty interesting here. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on Charlie Martz by 
by Elmore Leonard, a pretty wonderful, pretty great short story. I think it's one of the one of the best short stories that I've read this year so far. Uh, Elmore Leonard's writing is 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 pretty great in terms of of sucking you in and, and getting you in, um, enmeshed in this this world that he created. Even though it's it's a uh, it's not a very long short story, he uh, he does that with a couple of other short stories in this collection too, which I think are worth checking out. So I'm gonna recommend this to you um, if you can find it. I would be interested in checking out more of Elmore Leonard's books uh, because this is some of his unpublished work um, that that he didn't get published before he died. Imagine what else he had written after his death. Um, that that'd be um, uh, pretty in interesting to check out. Maybe uh, maybe read one of his uh, his suspense novels or something like that. So if you read this before uh, or you simply want to comment on my review, do that below. Let's talk about Elmore Leonard and also getting revenge. Um, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more more people can find about Elmore Leonard if they do not know already. Uh, and otherwise, I wish you the best of luck and your weird and westerny travels. Farewell.